All right, Ambush, and today we are joined by an indie singer, songwriter who has just released her debut full length album entitled Bitter Sweet. A little bit of a back story. Our guest today has been writing songs for about over 10 years now, but it was only about five years ago that she decided to take the stage. And about three years ago that finally, finally, we got a little bit of that sound out into the world as she released a debut self-titled EP in 2019. But like I mentioned, there's a new album. That's what we're here to discuss today with my guest, Marissa Burwell. How's it going today, Marissa? I'm doing pretty good. I'm excited to, um, to be here with you. Well, I am very excited as well. So I'm uh, very good to hear that. And of course, I'm ready to jump on into things. Very on ready to get into this. So of course, I want to lay a foundation down for our listener, for our uh, the audience. So like I mentioned, you released your debut EP in 2019 after sort of songwriting for a period of almost a decade. So before we get into the new new, I really need to know, what was it like that moment of finally getting your voice out into the world? Yeah, it was um, kind of terrifying, but also exhilarating. Um, I didn't really think that, I didn't know if I was ever going to put anything out, but it was only after going to like, live shows and just like seeing people share their music that I'm like, Oh, I want to do this. And I'm like very, I can be very anxious and I can, I have a lot of stage fright. Like still, I like really get worked up uh, if I have to perform when I perform. Um, so I was like, oh, I don't know if I can do this. I'm like just struggling with, um, like, am I going to remember the words? Am I going to remember the chords, all these things. So it was like a big mental challenge for me that was like, no, nope, you should put it out and you have to like play a show and like that kind of thing. So it was, um, a big like mental challenge. And then it also was just like, so cool to get the opportunity to, to build the songs when I'd only ever played them with like a couple chords and like my voice and then getting to come together with, um, other musicians and building them into something else was just really cool. Mm-hmm. Adding some instrumentation to it, some layers and otherwise. Totally. All right. It's hearing it all come to life. So, of course, uh, coming out of that moment of finally getting your voice out into the world, when exactly do you begin to put together this new effort, this uh, new album, Bittersweet? Because, of course, our first taste of Bittersweet came to us in 2021, but of course, as we all know, the last couple of years have maybe been a little uh, difficult for getting into the studio, for maybe getting some things done. So when exactly did the wheel begin to get put into motion after that EP on this new album, Bittersweet? That's a good question. I feel like it was always like in the back of my mind. Um, and I mean, like the songwriting itself started in, like, maybe at the same time as my EP. Because when I was playing shows, I had put out, I think, I want to say, there was five songs, I believe, that came out on my EP. And sometimes I needed more than five for, like, a show or whatever, um, for, like, the length. So I had written another song, um, Commotion in Slow Motion. So that has, I've been playing for, like, since the, since the EP came out. So, I mean, like, really, if you think about it, like, it's been, it's begun before, like, when the EP came out. So, like, 2019. Um, but to think of like when we actually started to record it, I guess it would probably be like starting to really like try and put stuff together is probably 2020. Um, yeah. Okay. So at what point in 2020 there? And then were you, we also mentioned like being able to work with different instrumentation and musicians was, did it take a little bit of time just to be able to get various musicians in there? Or do you just happen to have some people who are good with various musician or instruments or how did that work out? Yeah. So I was really lucky on all fronts. So, um, when, so first of all, like when did I start in 2020? It was before the pandemic. I, I think I'm trying to, I'm trying to like piece it together. I feel like my timeline of like the last like two years or more than ever is just like totally like non-existent it's like before and after um but i mean it's not like we're after the pandemic but um but 
around the, like around pandemic time, uh, when things first started is kind of when we, we started to record. Um, and then as for the other like, musicians on the record, I'm just really lucky to be surrounded by like some really great, uh, people that, yeah, like are, um, are great with so many instruments. Um, so for this album, um, I did like the vocals and some acoustic guitar. Um, I had a friend of mine, Madison Nickel. He played bass, various guitars, like acoustic, electric, pedal steel, piano, organ, I think, among other things. And then as well as Chris Demas, um, he played drums as well as did producing. Um, he all, it was also recorded and mixed by Chris Demas. These are all people that are in my band. So I was just like very lucky to have like this circle around me. Um, and then I also, uh, Gage McGuire also played on the album playing, uh, various guitars and keys as well and some harmonies. Awesome. So yes, quite a, uh, bit of instrumentation, quite a bit of sound inside of this album, which is one thing that I definitely, uh, love about it is it all really helps to bring everything to life and uh just brings that energy uh that you're trying to capture um really just like i meant, said brings it to life brings it um so much more uh depth to the songs here and of course i'd love to dive into some of these songs but before i say that uh where exactly was the album recorded was it recorded in saskatchewan or was it recorded in toronto because i know chris happens to be out in to right now yeah so he, yeah he recently made the move there so before that he was um in regina and we recorded it in his studio um so yeah, so it kind of worked. It was like all in like the the band. Like we were recording with with Chris. We like everyone in the band was produce like helping produce it and like all the instruments. Um, we had a couple people come in um, from the outside too at different points. Um, but yeah, so it was it, yeah, it was just it was mostly just kind of in our little circle, which was really great also for when the pandemic hit because. Um, it allowed us to go a little bit longer than maybe some other bands because they, we were just like our little circle. You were already your own little unit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, fantastic. All right. So, of course, like I mentioned, I want to dive into some of the tracks off of this album. And like I also mentioned, our first taste of Bittersweet came to us in 2021, in August of 2021, with a track entitled Take a Load Off. So what exactly were you trying to capture inside of Take a Load Off here? Yeah, that's a good question. So, I mean, I think I've said it before in like other like little press clippings, but this is like a song that was about like, that was written to myself by myself, which is really like, which is different because often I'm writing about a specific experience. I'm often using like um, words, like lines from conversation I've had with people or like that kind of thing. But this was more like addressed to myself and an experience that I was having internally, which was just different. Um, so yeah, it was actually after I did um, uh, like a writing exercise, um, reading after reading how to write one song, yeah, how to write one song. And it was like, the exercise was to like write a song like front to back. And even if you think it's like bad, just like keep on writing it through. So like, I hadn't really done that very much because usually I'll bring like, I'll use notes or lines from like notes in my phone that I like will come up with at random times or like about a specific experience. So I was writing it and I'm like, Oh, this is so cheesy. Like walking barefoot in the snow. Like, I don't know. I was just like, this is, Oh, whatever. And then like, I finish it to the end and I'm like, Oh, this actually is like special to me. And like, um, I, I actually like it and it ended up being the first single, which was, which was cool. Um, yeah, but I think it, it's like specifically the song just kind of like the difficulty of like sharing, sharing how you're feeling completely openly, um, without like feeling maybe like a burden and maybe feeling like it will be easier just like to keep it to yourself or like work through it for yourself, even though, even if like we're longing for like that support that we're looking for. Um, yeah. Hey, it's, it's a feeling a lot of people I feel like can relate to for sure. Cause like you mentioned, it's, 
you want to reach out. And even in, well, it's January, a month where a lot of us talk about that exact thing about reaching out, about talking to people, about otherwise. But it's very, some of us get that exact feeling where maybe we don't want to, maybe we feel like we're throwing our problems on other people. Maybe we feel like people aren't listening, but it's also good to know that like, we're not alone at the exact same time, right? Totally. Absolutely. Um, yeah. So I, I thought it was, it was relevant in the sense that like, I mean, for myself and then also I'm like, I think this is like a pretty universal, universal feeling for so many people. Um, so yeah. Absolutely. I can 100% agree and uh, maybe connect with that feeling a little bit myself as well on the inside. So, you know, <laughs> I, can, I can understand. <laughs> yeah, I think it's very normal and just, yeah. I, I, I can confirm that, the, that what you were trying to do. Um, yes, very much so. <laughs> uh, awesome. And of course, there was two singles that came off of a Bittersweet so far. Our most recent one about three weeks ago on January 7th here, 2022, with a track entitled Why Can't I? So I'd love to know. What exactly, what is it that we uh, can't do? What is it that we're questioning here? <laughs> well, that's a good question. And um, I think a lot of this time when I'm writing songs, uh, maybe I'm writing it and it's like after I write the song that I realize maybe what it's about specifically, or um, I think that I'm writing something broad and then I like look back, whether it's like a couple months later or it's like right after and I'm like, this is specific to this like certain situation. Like you are like, who are you kidding? Um, but I feel like this song is just, yeah, I don't know. It's, it's, it's such like a personal song, but at the same time, it's so hard to like express what it exactly is about. Um, but I think it's, um, Oh, this is so, I don't know why this one's so hard. I think because it is so personal and like wondering, like, like the vulnerability that comes with like sharing, like exactly what's behind the lyrics. Um, but I know that like when I wrote it, I was feeling, I had, I think I was feeling like quite hurt. Um, and maybe like misunderstood. And, um, I had taken my dog for a walk. I remember this. Um, I know I think it was like March 17th. Cause I had like uh, on the Spotify wrapped, uh, like every year, like it was like, it just showed me how many times I listened to a specific song. And so it's like, um, the song was taken by Muna. Mm -hmm. And so I like listened to that song all the time, but it was like, doo -doo -doo, and they was like, Whoa! and I had listened to that song 17 times on March 17th. I think it was. And I remember cause I was in the park and like, there's a line that's like, I didn't think I'd end up in this park. I usually feel uneasy being out here after dark. Um, and it's just like, I would, I never walk at nighttime really. Cause there's just like a fear, um, with like the evening. And, but I was listening to taken by Muna. Like, I don't think all 17 times were in the park, but I was just like running back and forth. And I just had all this, like these feelings that I was just so frustrated. And it's just like, why can't I be understood? Um, why can't, but also being scared to understand. And I think that's kind of like the first line when it says, I don't know everything that happened, but I'm too scared to ask. It's that like, I want to understand you and I want to understand the situation, but I'm also really scared what that's going to mean. If I do like have full understanding of you and the situation or whatever it is, it's just like, how is that going to change everything? So that's kind of my around the, um, like kind of not tiptoeing around, but that's kind of what a little like summary of, of how the song was kind of put together and maybe what I was thinking in, in that time. Hmm. You say tiptoe, but I feel like it kind of does describe it well enough at the exact same time. Cause once again, I feel like that's something that a lot of people like that idea of, I want to know more about someone, but will that change my opinion of someone? Or maybe that's not the exact thing, but still, I feel like that's 
What what you mentioned is I think that people can still understand that even if it is a tiptoe. I think you still reached the destination there. <laughs> yeah, totally. It just took me a second. I was like, okay, I've been thinking about like my answers to this. Why is it just like it's like whoo? <laughs> Ah, uh, it's sometimes the energy that you're trying to capture can be uh, quite a bit, but either way, as long as you can get the energy down, that's what matters, right? Yeah. Perfect. Awesome. And of course, we also got a music video along with this track. And you mentioned uh, running back and forth there, which uh, anyone who's seen this music video, you can kind of see just exactly uh, a little bit of running to some destinations, but also running in the background. It's you, and then, but it's also you in the background and, and everywhere and looking for yourself. And what are, is, are we trying to like, is there a representation here or what's the idea behind the music video? Yeah, that's a good question. I feel like it was kind of like um, a collaborative effort of like showing like a little bit, but also like kind of having like a different creative idea as well. So I did this video with Hot Take Films um, with Rob White did the filming and editing. And uh, when we kind of got together to talk about it, I shared about like, I want to be running because that's just like, that's how I wrote the song. And like, I didn't know exactly what, like how I wanted to do it because with a, I wanted to kind of have like a different idea of what exactly um, how I wrote the song. So kind of in, in the video, I think you like, you see me writing a letter to my, like, and then you see me behind the tree and it's like, there's a whole bunch of me's. <laughs> it's going to sound so funny if anyone hasn't seen the video, but like, there's a whole bunch of me's in the back. So they look almost like ghosts of me or whatever. So it's just kind of like in this, in this album, I think it's, it's kind of talking about like the, like a to yourself almost like, um, yeah, just like questioning yourself and um, almost as if the song is written yourself, even though in this case, the song wasn't written about, like take load off like, in regards to myself. But um, yeah. Okay, nice. Well, I, I enjoy that very much. And I feel like it's like you mentioned, kind of represents, but also has its own idea, which is uh, very beautiful inside of its own way. Yeah, I think that that's also something where it's like, I know so many times, like I love knowing the exact story behind every line of like my favorite artist songs, but I also recognize that like, they're not always going to want to do that. And there's going to be like some space for interpretation, which I also know a lot of people like love, including myself, love the interpretation that you can come up with it yourself by like listening to this and being like, Oh, this fits exactly how I'm, how I'm feeling or what I'm going through right now. But maybe if they didn't, if the listener didn't like actually knew the story, they'd be like, oh, never mind. Like it's not really relevant. So I think it's also kind of cool how um, to have like a video that's not exactly the story that I had when I was writing it, just to like broaden like the, again, like giving more space for people to come up with their own ideas. Hmm, absolutely. It's, um, we all put our own energy into things, but of course the listener themselves, they have their own interpretation, maybe their own healing, whatever it is they take from it. Right. Yeah, absolutely. Awesome. So of course this new album, bittersweet released at a midnight of the day that we're actually recording this. Cause we're recording this the day that the album released. So I want to know what has it been like the excitement now that the album is finally out. Oh, it honestly feels kind of surreal um, because we were supposed to have it um, released. I think it was in the summer. Um, we were lucky enough to be like supported by Creative Saskatchewan for this album, and so we had um, had it set for like the grant for us to come out in the summer and just like we're constantly just like we need an extension because in order to like fully um like to put this out how we want to and everything it's like let's can we push it back a bit more so it just it feels like it's been a long time coming and it just feels so good and also i mean the songs aren't necessarily like super new to me anymore um so i mean they're still new but um they're not as new so it's just i'm happy that they're out before i listen to them too much that i like i'm like 
is this even good anymore? Cause I know sometimes I'll listen and be like, I'll like listen to it to like, look for like internal validation of like, yeah, this is great. Like you're proud of yourself. And so I didn't know how much longer I could listen to it without other people hearing it. <laughs> well, and I'm sure you've probably also written some other songs over this period of two years as well too, right? Where you're like, oh, I have this new song that I wrote that I'm really excited to get out in the world, but I also have other music that I need to get out into the world first. Totally, yeah. And I, I think one thing, I don't know how many art, like I know lots of artists um, will like write a whole bunch of songs and then they'll like choose which ones. Um, but my writing process is a lot slower. Like I don't have a lot of extra songs when I'm like, like the songs that were written for this, like, a lot of them were written in like the last like two years and be like, Oh man, like we're almost recorded all the songs and I still need to have like at least one more. Like I'd wanted 10 songs for the album, but I just didn't feel like the 10th that I had was maybe the right fit, but it wasn't like, I was like, okay, I'll just switch it for this. Cause I, yeah, I just, I take a lot. I take kind of like a slower step back and um, a slower approach to writing. And maybe that's just with like, a busy lifestyle, but I mean, everyone, I feel like everyone has a busy lifestyle. So, Well, and sometimes when it comes to art, you want to make sure that you're taking the time to craft, to make sure that it's getting out the exact energy, the exact idea that you're trying to capture within it. Totally. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Well, I feel like the time that has been taken has come out very beautiful. This album, Bittersweet, it is an incredible listen. The audience, the watcher, the listener of this interview should definitely go and check out Bittersweet. They should go and watch the video for Why Can't I over on your YouTube. And in general, they should just go ahead and support you over on social media, follow you so that they can stay up to date with everything that's going on in the world of Marissa Burwell and how exactly, what is the best way for them to go ahead and do that? Uh, well, you can follow my Instagram, which is at Marissa Burwell. I just um, launched a website. So just www.marissaburwell.com, which is kind of a game changer because then you have everything. Even if you can't remember anything else, you can find all the information on there. Marissa Burwell on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Music, Bandcamp title all of them so um amazon music you can kind of find me wherever awesome and like i mentioned they should definitely go ahead and do that marissa i have a one last question for you are you ready for it yeah i think so all right so we have talked about the last two three years here finally getting out into the world finally releasing your own music and then getting to this a new album here, a bitter sweet. So, what I would like to know is through this time, through this process, how exactly has it helped you to grow as a person, or what has it taught you about yourself? Well, um, I think that if we're speaking specifically about like the recording process, the putting the music out, and all like just like really specifically in the music realm. Um, I think that I've become a lot more independent and confident in my abilities. I think, um, when I put my EP out, I had never played a live show. I didn't know how to use like a tuner pedal. I didn't know, like, you know, all those things. So I relied on a lot of people and I still do. Don't get me wrong. My van is like, like Chris and Madison. And they like, every time we'll play a show and stuff, I, they're helping me out so much. Um, but yeah, I'm a lot more independent and, um, just by the experiences that I've had in the last three years, I've just become more confident. Um, and I think also before I, I felt like maybe, um, I didn't have anything to say when it came to like the production part of crafting the songs or those kind of things. But now I'm realizing that I do have something to say and I do have ideas. Um, and I've been able to realize that because of the safe space that has been created by the members around me, which has been really great because it's been cool to be like, Oh, I do have an idea and this might sound cool. And to see some of them like come to life on, um, on the record has been really, really cool. Um, and just made me like, reminded me that, yeah, you do have good ideas and you're your own worst critic. So (laughs) (laughs) we can definitely be our own toughest critic, but I'm glad that you found an environment that, uh, 
allows you to feel that you are capable of because they're your songs. I mean, obviously, you should have some idea of how they should sound. And also, just very glad that this journey has allowed you to become more confident as a person. And I thank you for sharing not only this lesson, but also the story behind this new album, Bittersweet, here today with us on the Desert Tiger Podcast. Yeah, thank you so much for having me. That was awesome.